Hello, welcome to Man Cave on Trains. And today I'm going to show you around the Engage set. I've had a few people on the um, on the groups on Facebook or even on my main YouTube channel ask me a few questions about can I show you a closer look around the Engage set that I made in 10 days. Um, yes, I did make this layout behind me in 10 days. Um, I'd never had a layout before and I basically started with a table and I'm very impatient. I'm not one of these people that can add a little bit every month and take three years to build a setup. I wanted the 10 day setup, not the 10 month setup, which is what I managed to do. So without any further ado, let's fire this puppy up and I'll show you around it. Right, as you can see, I have two layers. I had never done model trains before, ever. Um, I'm 46 years old and I've never had a train set in my life. Due to space requirements, I've managed to secure the, um, the little spare room upstairs in the house off the missus. And yeah, due to space, I decided to go for a relatively small layout. So I went five by three. And I basically made got a kitchen table off Facebook Marketplace or a dining room table. This is just a five for three table with screw on legs. So if I ever need to move or get out of this room, I can just unscrew them metal legs and lift the rocks off and pull the trees out and I can pick the whole thing up. And, you know, so if we ever move or I need to get out of the room, it's not a problem. I didn't want to set up what was fixed in the house. So, you know, it's basically there and you can't move it. So, as you can see, it's engage. And, yeah, it's really simple. Table on top there. You can see that will mark on there, look. That is 30mm styrofoam. That's a blue styrofoam. And on top of that, all I did on top of that was, I didn't use a track plan. I made this whole thing out of my head. So basically I got a bundle of used track and I started building a track. I built a bottom track. And once I was happy with the shape of the track, I thought, yep, that'll do. So I sort of held it down with, um. I didn't use trap pins, I use these, come out of wicks, just little veneer pins, and they're tiny, and they're absolutely perfect to go through this, this is Feshman track, Feshman, I hope I pronounced this right, Feshman Piccolino, or something like that, and the trap pins are just fine, and all they, they don't exactly hold the track, but they'll go through the track into the styrofoam and hold it enough. For what you need for the minute the rest of it is held down when you put your ballast down on the side there and you pour liquid pva over that it goes under the track and that bonds the track as well so although this little pin this track is really really strong it's not going to come off in a hurry and if you ever do want to get it off which i did remove this little piece to extend this siding all the way there and i added this siding in um about a fortnight ago to go to the end so to get this piece of track out there to put this point in i just poured a little bit of warm water over there left it a couple of minutes and it just you know the pva softened up and it just pried up and i managed to get the straight bit of track out to put this point in to allow me to add this siding which was never there before so what did i do in that first 10 days well I got the table, the very next day I glued the styrofoam on, you can see a gap here, the styrofoam come in, I think it was 4 by 2 sheets, so I got 3 sheets of that, and the only join I had to put in was here, there's another, the other joins are along there, and another one along the back, but basically I had enough with um, 3 sheets of 4 by 2 to do it, as you can see there's no joins up this up this way at all so once i've got the star phone down and put the track down forget the top track for now i'll get to that in a second i then basically 
um, painted the styrofoam in brown and green. Before I put the grass and the ballast down, if you look carefully underneath the grass, you can see brown paint. So I basically, where I was going to have sort of ballast, I did it brown underneath. And where I was going to have a grass, I put green underneath. And I just used cheap kids acrylic poster paint. And I just painted it with a two inch brush. Nothing special at all. I just painted that in a sort of brown and added a bit of white to it and to give it a bit of texture. The same with the green area. That was all just painted green. Apart from the pond, which I did paint out in the brown. I've got to put the fake water in that. Yeah, that's one thing I haven't got around to doing. So, yes, yeah, so that's basically how I made that. It was all just painted green. And that covers up so if there's any ball patches in your flocking, in the grass, you don't notice it so much. And I think it gives it a lovely natural look because it looks like there's sort of dirt underneath that. That transition between the sort of ballast and the grass, there's a sort of muddy piece which I really, really like. So once I've done that and I put the flocking down, I then decided I want a top track. It just looked a bit boring with one track around the bottom. So the top track, as you can see, it lifts off. The whole thing will lift off. It has a separate power track. These two tracks are totally independent of each other. Because I'm on DC, I'm not on digital control. I went DC because it was my first ever setup. I wanted simplicity. So this bottom track has a separate power supply. This top track has a separate power supply. And no, the trains can't go from the top track to the bottom. They are totally independent. There's no gradient going from one track to another. So you've got two totally independent tracks. Do I wish I'd put a gradient in so I could get the trains to go from the top track to the bottom track? Looking back now, maybe I've got to a stage where I wouldn't mind that. And I have actually got to the stage where I really want to extend this to make it bigger. So I've either got to extend this one up to that wall where the keyboard's laying. I've got about another three or four feet. I could extend it that way. Or I could just take all my rolling stock off. Sell this whole layout and start again because to be honest with you for me building the layout it was more fun or as much fun no you know it was more fun than actually running the trains running the trains is great but once it's done and they're going round and round yeah yeah i do like watching them and i love playing with them and backing them down the points and shunting them about that is great fun but I also enjoyed the building of the layout much, much more. I really enjoyed building the layout. The first thing I did when I got back from work, every evening I came up in this room and I'd done a bit more. And yeah, so I basically laid the flock, laid the track. I decided I wanted a top track. How did I make up the top track? Well, I got a big piece of a big roll of um, back and wallpaper. That's nice and stiff. I laid a section of wallpaper, the full length of the table, on top of this track. Before I'd put the trees or the scenery on, I just laid a piece of wallpaper on top of the track. And I built another track on top of that. Because I had enough track left over. So I built this section of track on top of my wallpaper. And I basically drew round the track with a pen. And I marked about, I think it was two inches either side, or 50 mil if you want to be posh and modern. I went about 50 mil either side and drew round. And then the ends I just opened up to the length of the table, because that comes to the end of the table there. And the end of the table there. Excuse the shadows, but the lighting isn't that good in this room. So yeah, I basically then drew round that wallpaper. And then I cut it out, I cut the middle out, and laid that on top of a piece of, I think it's, I think it was 5, 6 mil plywood. That's all that is, 5, 6 mil ply. Just laid it on there, drew round it, cut it out with a jigsaw, came back, and these are made of, these are just styrofoam blocks. They're just, the blue styrofoam 
cuts ever so easy with a knife and yeah I'll show you how I made them right how I made them here's the styrofoam I just cut these little blocks these are some spare ones I had they fit neatly underneath there look all I did was I cut these out to the height I wanted and all I used was a simple carving knife out of the kitchen this stuff is it's oh, I can't nip it it's surprisingly strong but when you want to cut it it's ever so easy so I just got these and to get them this texture I used again kids acrylic poster paint and white emulsion I just put some white emulsion inside a margarine tub and I just poured a bit of black paint in one end, a bit of brown paint in the other end, didn't mix it up, painted this whole thing white, while that was still wet, dappled over, just with a small brush, dappled over it in brown, dappled over it in black, and then you basically get this sort of, you know, this sort of effect, that's really how it's done. I did sand the edges off with 80 grit sandpaper because I didn't want them square. I wanted this to look a lot more natural. Because as we all know, there are no straight lines in nature. And I wanted this to look like it's sort of... I wanted a rural setup. I didn't want um, a town setup. And the back tunnel is also a section of styrofoam two long strips which were off cuts of what I had left over from doing the top of the table I had enough off cuts to do all this so three four by two sheets did all of this and I had these off cuts and I just crudely cut these squares out again with a knife that's all it is um, as either a bread knife or a carving knife just jam the knife through Jam it through the bottom, jam it through the other side, jam it through the top, push them out. And then you push a load of little blocks out and you're left with holes in styrofoam. And again, it was painted over with my emulsion, um, you know, my emulsion and stuff mix. So once I've done that, these are just bonded to this wood with big old um, cork and gun full of no nails. So that's just a blob of no-nails on each one of them. Stuck them in. Laid this bit of wood down. Everything. The ends I'll get to in a minute. I actually left them open. So these two ends were left open. There's just a couple of blocks placed under there for support. So I left the ends open. And then I laid it down. Left it overnight for everything to dry. Then I painted the wood green. And brown this, I think that's brown under this end, brown under that end, and green along both sides. We'll get to that in a closer in a minute. So, yep, I basically did that. This was all within the first four or five days before I'd even ran the trains. In fact, I didn't even have the trains at that point. So once I'd got the top layer on, then I started laying the flocking down. Very easy. Um... Get some PVA in a margarine tub, water it down, brush it all over with a two inch brush, using a little sieve, get your flock, put your flock in, sieve it over, give it a little tickle, it all goes down, and you're left with basically this. So I was left with this, then I built the track up, and I actually stuck the track down. I didn't put panel pins in this top track. It's actually stuck down with, again, a little bit of no nails. A little tiny blob, about every couple of inches. So I built the track, lifted it slightly, little blob, put it down. As you can see, if you look really closely, there's a little bit of... I should have used clear, but I used white no nails. And there is a little bit coming out in a couple of places. I've disguised that one with a little fake plant, but there is a little bit of no nails coming out there are the only two places you can spot it it looks pretty natural really no one really notices it and these the rocks they are made of polystyrene big sheet of polystyrene i think that's 70 i'll show you the thickness of it because the whole backdrop i bought an eight before sheet of this polystyrene 
it's this thick so it's basically as wide as your hand and that's just out of wixers about 15 pound a sheet really really cheap i just cut that lot out off the eight before sheet and i carved all the rock face out again with a knife do it outside it's a very very messy job if you do it in your house you're going to have polystyrene balls everywhere so i just carved all that out with a knife to get this textured finish and done my dry brushing again just with the old emulsion paint the whole thing white emulsion then go over it with your different colors once that's dry thinly load your brush up with your brown paint and go over the highlights and that basically gives you that textured finish these rocks let's get to these rocks in fact let's get to the trees first the trees look impressive cheap as chips that from china on ebay i actually ordered them a couple of weeks before i even started the build because i knew that was going to take a month to get here um the trees are very cheap about i think that was five six or seven pounds for 10 or 20 different trees so i got several different trees you know three or four different packets i have added to added to them sorry since that 10 days i've added more trees and i have added a bit more to it but for the first 10 days i did actually get the trains up and running it looked pretty much like this but i have added a few buildings since then i've added the workshop after the 10 days the little mill i had that originally i also had the little factory that was original i've added the church since and the mansion and the little house at the back the little alpine house so yeah that's basically what i've done um i say these are real rock like i've just said there's some more real rock there some more of that plaster um plaster rock there and i'm going to move on now to how i made these these rocks people say how do you make them well it's made out of the polystyrene this stuff here what i carved out it's basically the 70 mil that's why it's your hand they come in an eight before sheet out of wixers about 15 quid so not expensive for an eight before sheet and all that rock face is just carved out with a knife no hot guns no hot wires just a plain old carbon knife just scrape and dig it out and then paint it with my emulsion black and brown paint mix same goes for these you can actually see the join layer in there i could have easily filled that up with a poly filler but i thought it looked like a na uh, natural fissure so i didn't bother i just left it but these simply lift off the trees are stuck in and as you can see it's polystyrene there you go the tunnel is just carved out where the track goes just polystyrene and if i show you underneath you can actually see the baseboard with the green paint on that i was telling you about um because i've put no flock over there because it's covered up and there's a wire tape there which supplies the light for the little alpine house we'll get to the wire in a little while so yeah that's basically what the bare wood looks like underneath and once that's on i've even got little marks where it lines up so i know exactly how to line it up all this is is beads of no nails which i've got to line up with the crevices i made number one it's a bit of a locator so i know exactly where they go and number two it's well just likes to blend a bit better didn't want to fix these permanently in case i ever need to get in there for maintenance track repair or a train derail although you can actually just about see through it you can just see around the other side the rock in the corner is made of the same thing but that's three layers high this is only two layers high gives nice perspective so things stand out so i think best thing to do without me waffling on course some of you might be bored but now i'm going oh just show us at working man well i wanted to show you really this is not so much about how it works it's about what i've done because people have asked about what i've done these buildings as you'll see they are illuminated illuminated lit up 
whatever you want to call it. Um, very much rule one trains these. I love the class 37. My whole reason for setting up the train set is um, when I was a kid, there used to be a class 37 locally, which used to pull BIS sand trains, which I've actually managed to find some of them. There are the BIS sand wagons. There they are. Um, these are Grand Farish ones. And I've actually managed to find, I think, seven of them. So every time one comes up, I will sort of get them back. It took me a few months just to get seven. And there's an oddment I found there. Never seen another one like that before. BIS sand for rockware glass. So, yeah, that's really why I wanted to do a train set. I wanted to recreate the Class 37, pulling a load of these wagons. But that's as many of the wagons as I can find. I also, really, because I see it on eBay cheap, I bought this American Loco. Um, it was sold in the UK. And it was surprisingly cheap. It was under £30. And it's a Backman. And it's a EMD GP... Is that a GP30 or GP40? I think that one's a GP40. And it's turned... To be honest with you, it's turned into my favourite train because it runs so, so nice. This is so much smoother than the Class 37, and surprisingly, it's much more powerful. And that only has eight wheels, where the Class 37's got 12. So this is actually driven on eight wheels, and the Class 37 over there is driven on 12 wheels. Yet this will actually pull a lot more than the Class 37. But this is a little bit heavier than the Class 37, so maybe weight adds to traction, I don't know, but I've never developed wheel slip on this. I mean, I put all these tankers here. Plus, I can hook all these tankers up I've got on this little shunter. I can hook all these wagons and tankers off this shunter on the back of this lot here. And that EMD will just breeze around the track with no wheel slippage at all. If I put the Class 37 on the same load... Yes, it will pull it, but on the corners it will develop wheel slip. Sometimes you have to go backwards and forwards to start off because it will just spin on the spot. So the 37 does lose traction a lot easier than this. Um, but this is fast turned into my favourite train. I love this little train. And I actually like... Yeah, I mean, I'm English. I always am. But I actually do like the way the American locos, I like the look of them better than our English locos. Sorry guys, but I do like the American stuff. I think these just look mean. They just look mean and meaty compared to, you know, the English stuff. I mean, the sort of Class 37 to me is the most meaty looking of the English locos. More so. I like. I think the class thirty-seven looks more meaty than the class sixty-six, but you know, it's the thirty-seven. I remember that distinctive sound, and that's why I wanted to create this. But now the Santa Fe, I'm afraid, has taken over, and I actually love all the American-style tankers. The little tankers are made by Atlas. Got a nice little collection of them, and the little fueling station. There is a video on the channel about how I weathered this from the shiny new silver it was to what it is now. There you go. So yeah, the first train I ever got was this little shunter. A little Class 08. That's also a Graham Farish. The Class 37 is a Graham Farish. Um, that's an original Graham Farish. The Class 37 is a Farish Backman. This EMD is a American Backman. Um, pretty much the same company. But I think this one on the box, it said Backman Philadelphia. So I think that's a US made one, not an English built one. But I did buy it in the UK. So we'll have a little breeze around and then I'll actually get this thing started for you. So you can now see all the details we've got. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell you how I filled the back in. All I did was put some blocks in the back 
and to make the curve it's just um, thick cardboard that I bought from the range um, I just cut a strip out what fitted in there sort of give it a bend so it held the virtual shape just for sort of bending it and then I stuck that to the blocks went over it with my sort of brown emulsion mix again same with this end that's just a piece of cardboard in that end so let's get this thing started up I just gotta plug it in guys there we go and we're on I will show you how this is controlled if I pull my little drawer out my controller sit in there this controller is just for the lights yeah so all this power supply does here is control all my lights so I can turn the tunnel lights to make them off darker brighter including the hood light but not all of the lights work on that if I turn that off you can still see the house is lit up the church is lit up that's because they are wired to the 12 volt output the permanent 12 volt on the twin controller so as soon as the, this controller is turned on at the mains the house the church and indeed this little factory here they all light up the street lights and tunnel lights and the lights which are underneath the deck come on with this other transformer I didn't put them on permanent 12 because when you have them on 12 volts they're bright like that and they were too overpowering yes I put resistors on them but they were too overpowering I wanted to be able to turn them down a bit so I don't want them too too bright like that's too much you want them just right a bit like that that's lovely so this is basically all there is. So you can see the tunnels are lit up by the LED ribbon where you can buy them lengths, 10 meter rolls of LED ribbon. And I think you cut them off about every four LEDs to what length you want. And I just stuck that to the underside of this wood with hot glue and you can just solder a 12 volt to the end put that direct into this controller all that is is a single train controller a spare one i had laying about um which i used to use in the garage for testing old car radios actually i had this long before i had the train set and i thought well that's perfect so yeah that can that controls the voltage to the lights the lights which are underneath the tunnel if we can see them, can you see them? Or as if I can get low enough, there they are. You can just see them underneath the tunnel. There we are. All they are is a string of um, like clear LED lights, about three meters. They normally run on AA batteries. But um, if you cut the battery box off and you've got your two wires, if you just put a 2K resistor on one of the wires you can run them on 12 volt they're also controlled by this so they get brighter and dimmer the higher up i put it so yeah it works i find working lights off a separate controller is perfect because you can adjust the brightness exactly how you want you haven't got to worry exactly about getting the exact resistor to get the brightness you want sometimes when the sun's coming in through the window you might want these turned up a bit when that's dark like it is now you can have them quite low or however you want them so we've got the lights let's set the train going which train is going to i can't remember which point is turned on now ah the santa fe she's now going to pull out here we go i've got the fuel station caught up on it there we go there we go so off the Santa Fe he goes pull on his little rake of tankers around he goes and you'll see him now go through the back tunnel
and I will come. Let's set the 37 going if I turn the other controller on. Here comes the 37. So this is basically what my train set is. And obviously if I want to, I can reverse either of these trains. I can run them at very different speeds. So I can have the American Loco just shunting along nicely. If any of you guys are interested in what the scale speed for these is, let me turn this off. These Atlas wagons are about three inches long. If you do three inches per second, so if you count one second from the front of this tanker to the back of this tanker passing this plant, if that takes one second for this tanker to pass the plant, you've got a scale speed of around 50 miles an hour which is about what these travel at so we really want him traveling one two yep that's a scale speed of about 50 miles an hour like that if you're racing round he just looks so out of place it's unbelievable and on the back of the 37 like I said a very rural one we have some I had some spare American rolling stock. And instead of just parking in a siding, I thought, nah, we'll put it behind the 37 and put my English sand cars behind it. So you've now seen exactly what this is all about. And I can just stop this little backman There you go, that's a lovely control DC stop look. And we can just back him now, back down his siding. So we can back him down there. And if we flick the point, I haven't got electric points in here yet. If we flick that point on. And this other point off, we can bring the little OA out now. And he can come out to play. He, ah, he went on the track right, there you go. I knocked him off earlier and just placed him back on. Come on, work. There we go. We've got quite a bit behind him actually, so he is going to struggle with that a little bit. I've got a bit too much behind him. He struggled to pull that. So you've now seen my model railway and everything I have. Yeah, I have got a bit too much behind him, actually. A little shunter isn't designed to pull all that. Yeah, he's not even... So we've got the little 37 back down. When I set the back one off again, we'll change the points. Off he can go. There you go. Nice gentle pull off. And here he comes through his back tunnel. 
So yeah, this is what you can do in 10 days on quite a small budget. I mean, most of the things I bought on here second hand. The only things I bought brand new were the trees, really. Yeah, all the buildings and everything else were second hand off eBay. Yeah, the trees I bought new. The little refinery I bought new, the water tower I bought new, but everything else was used, including these locos, all the rolling stock. So there is my end game. Sorry the video is a bit long and drawn out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop your comments below if you think I should add anything, whether you think I should extend this to the end of the room or shall I get rid of this entire layout and just build a whole new one going from wall to wall. Or do I extend this or do I keep it? Very reluctant to get rid of it to be honest because it was my first layout. I would, if I built another one from scratch I would always worry that I was not as happy with it as I was the first one I did. I actually really like this. I will try and get an elevated picture from up above so you can see it from up above. But whether I'm tall enough to reach up here. There it is. I think you can just about get it all in. There you go. So, please like and subscribe to the channel, comment if you have any questions, comment if you have any recommendations about what I can do. Um, I'm not worried about going DCC, so that's not really on my list of things to do, having digital control, it doesn't really bother me. Um, I think if you're doing a town layout with busy junctions and lots of different tracks and sidings, DCC is probably perfect but I don't like them type of layouts because I grew up in the country I used to see the trains rolling through the countryside and that's what I want to recreate I just wanted a very rural scenery instead of being full of roads and buildings and I just wanted a nice rural scenery and I think that's what I've made there we go so I'm going to end the video now. So um, like I said, like and subscribe to the channel. It's a new channel. Um, my main channel is just called Norfolk Man Cave. That's a totally different channel altogether. That's where I work on my old stationary engines and classic cars. So if that's your thing, hop over to my main channel. It's just Norfolk Man Cave. You'll find it quite easily. And yeah, you'll see me with my classic cars stationary engines all kinds of things i do on there but i didn't think that was the right channel to be putting train videos on because us train people we're quite niche that's quite a niche market so i made up a separate channel just for the trains as you probably see from the introduction video so i will say goodbye for now and happy 2021 to you because we're now second of january i think it is today and i hope you stay safe this year and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now guys.